Ladies and gentlemen, this is a 2006 Ford GT. When it was new back in 2006, it cost $150,000. Now, good ones will sell for $400,000. That's right, an 11-year-old Ford is worth $400,000. So just how is that possible? Well, I've driven seven hours up to Toronto to review this one and find out. For my in-depth thoughts, click the link below to check out my column on autotrader.com slash oversteer. But first, some basics. The Ford GT was designed to resemble the 1960s Ford GT40 race car, so named because it was 40 inches tall. They didn't keep the name because this one is 43 inches tall. It features a supercharged 5.4 liter V8 with 550 horsepower and 500 pound feet of torque, good for zero to 60 in less than four seconds. Back when the GT came out, Ford dealers had trouble selling them, but now values have skyrocketed. Before we get to why that is, let's go over a few of the car's quirks that you probably wouldn't know unless you've spent some time with one. Starting with the doors. Here's the situation with the doors. They have a roof. Now you might not understand why this is a problem, but allow me to demonstrate. In a normal car, you open the door, you climb in. It's easy. In the Ford GT, it's not so easy. You open the door, and then the roof prevents you from climbing in. So, you maneuver yourself around it, and if you're lucky, oh, if you're lucky, you get inside. Oh, oh crap, now I gotta get out. <laughs> Up front, the headlights have a cool Easter egg in them. The Ford GT was built to commemorate Ford's 100th birthday, and so the headlights say 100. And the trunk. Now, there are two ways to open the trunk, one of which is you just push the button on the key fob. The other is you take the key, place it into the fender of the vehicle, turn it, and then pull this latch. Now, the problem is now we don't have enough hands to actually open the trunk, so you gotta do a little hand acrobatics, and it's open. On the other side, there's another keyhole, except this one is for the gas cap. Once you get inside the trunk, you'll find that it's small, very small. And just because your bags fit doesn't mean the trunk will actually close, thanks to the strange design of the trunk hood. Admittedly, there is a little extra storage room inside the car. A very little. Around back, opening the hood to get to the engine is not the easiest thing to do. The first thing you have to do is pull a lever located inside the car behind the seats on the ceiling. Then you have two black levers behind the B-pillars that you have to push and then open the hood at the same rate so that it doesn't get off kilter and askew. If you get it off kilter and screw it up, a new hood is $35,000. Here's another interesting thing about the GT. In this one, when you open the hood, unlike the original GT40, the rear doesn't open as well. That's because there are federal regulations in the United States that say that brake lights cannot be on a movable piece of bodywork. So the hood comes up, but the tail lights stay perfectly in place. The GT also has a few quirks inside, like the fact that a few items came right out of the Ford parts bin, including the key and key fob, the window switches, the mirror switch, and the turn signal and wiper stocks, which were literally taken from a Ford Focus. But it's not all shared switch gear. The GT has some of the coolest toggle switches I've ever seen, including the coolest hazard light switch in any car. The mirrors are almost completely blocked by the A-pillars and it's not like you can see very much out of the center mirror either. And then there are the air vents. There's only three of them, and only one is really anywhere near the driver. So now you're probably thinking, okay, I get it. This is a cool performance car, but it's still an 11-year-old Ford with weird doors, bad air conditioning, and a turn signal lever from the Ford Focus. How can it possibly be worth $400,000? Let's take it for a spin. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do this. We're taking the Ford GT on the road. I'm very scared, but not that scared, don't worry. <laughs> I just am mentally calculating the value of this vehicle compared to the other ones. The seat is so hard with the stupid uh, circles in it. It like, it's, it hurts. Like it's not the most comfortable thing. I thought it would be more comfortable. First and third are very close. They're not something you want to mess up either in this vehicle. 
So yeah, you can't see much. The mirrors, in that mirror, you mostly see the, the hip of the car. Boy, even just a small touch of the pedal, you can really feel that this car has a lot to give. It's, it's a smoother ride than I was expecting. Coming off that Ferrari Challenge car, I think this is like feels like a limousine. It's the seat that hurts. Like it, it's on my spine. <laughs> Brakes are good. Brakes are nice and grabby. The clutch isn't so bad. It, like it makes sense. It's not like really heavy or has some weird like kick in it or something. It's linear and it, and it feels fine. It doesn't, it, it's not as intimidating as I thought. Oh my God, that's half throttle. <laughs> myself if anybody makes a wrong move they're going to be on their they're going to be beyond their insurance coverage limits right like they're, they're going to go they're going to file bankruptcy god man it just has so much power wow wow yeah i mean in terms compared to other exotics even like the ferrari i had i feel like was a lot more compromised than this for one thing the ride was way worse than that car First and third are very close together, but other than that, it's easy to kind of go through the gears. The steering does feel a little light, lighter than I would expect from a car like this. It's it's not too light. It's not like a Lexus. Yeah. You can really, you can, it changes directions quickly. It just, it feels drivable. It feels so drivable. Th there's not a lot of uh, road noise, which really surprised me because you get in any other Ford of this era and there is a lot of road noise. <laughs> but the clutch, I'm taken by how easy the clutch is. It's quite interesting. It's much easier than the Aston's clutch. sort of considered this to be sort of a, a wealthy man's Viper. And so I thought it would be like that. And it actually isn't. It's a lot more composed than the Viper to drive. And the clutch is a lot easier than the Viper. And the transmission is a lot more slicker than the Viper. And this is more Ferrari. This has more Ferrari in it than Viper, for sure. I'm constantly thinking about the value. It's a constant concern. You, you can't drive this car and pretend that it isn't. It's worth as much as a house. It it's still feels just like a Ferrari or Lamborghini or something when you're turning. I'm surprised at how how tame you know it sounds and how well it rides. I just it like actually I, I can't believe Ford put this together in 2005. You know they, they were making the Explorer Sport Track <laughs> and they put this thing together. It's like it's stunning to me. you start to understand why the values have gone up so much. Not only is it crazy looking, but actually any idiot can drive it, including me. It, it feels just as solid as, as an exotic car from any automaker who's been in the business for 50 years. But the driving experience isn't the only reason these are worth up to $400,000. Just look at it. Ferraris are Ferraris and Lamborghinis are Lamborghinis, but nothing looks like a Ford GT. The hips, the width, the exotic low slung look. This might just be the most distinctive American-made car in an entire generation. But is it worth it? For my final thoughts, click the link below to check out my column on autotrader.com slash oversteer. Oh, I should, probably shouldn't have parked the Aston there. Oh, boy. Ugh. Made it.